Welcome to Hyperscale's very first video review. My name is Brett Green and today we'll be taking a look at Edward's brand new 132nd scale Messerschmitt BF109 E1. Yes, I've read your comments on the forum where some of you are asking do we really need another Messerschmitt BF109 E? Well, in my humble opinion, I think we probably do, at least in 32nd scale, for two main reasons. Firstly, we've never had a genuine Messerschmitt BF109 E1 as an injection moulder kit in any scale, let alone 132nd. Yes, I can hear some of you Augsburg Eagle experts out there saying that Hasegawa released a couple of Messerschmitt BF109 E1 boxings, but the plastic was just a standard BF109 E3 uh, provided with a resin plug that you had to add to the inside of the bottom of the wing and actually sand down the bulge on the bottom of the wing and rescribe the correct fairings for the top of the wing. So in my opinion that doesn't really count. The second reason that I'm really pleased about this release is that the only other two Messerschmitt BF 109Es in 32nd scale are genuine products of the 1970s. The first Hasegawa's Messerschmitt BF 109E3E4 kit uh, isn't bad, the outline is okay, it has fine raised detail, but some of the shapes are off and the cockpit for example really bears no resemblance to any 109 that ever flew. The wheel wells are just as bad. The only other choice in 32nd scale is the Matchbox kit and the Mad Trencher uh, of 1970s Matchbox fame really visited this kit with a vengeance. Uh, it has very, very thick, uh, very soft panel lines engraved all throughout. Even if you can get past the horror of the three coloured plastic, uh, some of the shapes are not quite right. The nose and the spinner in particular are very poor uh, and it, it needs a lot of work. I did actually build one of these a couple of years ago, uh, put a, a new resin cockpit into it, uh, uh, put a whole bunch of rivets all over it to try to de-emphasize the very thick panel lines but uh, it's still not up to uh, anywhere near today's standards. But the final reason that I'm really excited about this kit is that Edward's recent releases have been gorgeous. They've all been beautifully detailed, they have very fine subtle surface features and they're brilliantly engineered. Well, let's see what Edward have in store for us with their first 30 second scale release. Underneath the attractive box art, we have 169 pieces in Edward's fairly typical olive coloured plastic, plus another five parts in clear. Multimedia parts include two photo etch sets. One fret is in full colour and the other is in standard nickel. We also get the almost standard inclusion of Edward masks for the canopies uh, in this kit as well. The quality of the moulding is perfect. Uh, there are a couple of minor sink marks here and there, but nothing that will really be visible on the completed model. The surface texture is beautifully restrained. I've seen in some photos on the internet where uh, the fabric texture looks a little deep, uh, and where even the rivet detail looks a bit thick. But looking at the plastic itself, uh, it really is gorgeous. It's, it's very subtle indeed. So there are very fine engraved panel lines that are supplemented with selected rows of rivets in exactly the right place. On the control surfaces, we have raised uh, ribs and we have stitching as well. Uh, if you do think that the surface detail on the control surfaces are is a little exaggerated. You could always sand it down or possibly fill in some of the recesses with uh, Mr. Surfacer. Speaking of control surfaces, everything is supplied separately. So we have a separate rudder, separate elevators, separate flaps which are designed to be positioned dropped uh, and also separate leading edge slats as well. So uh, that's that's all very handy. It's nice to be able to display the kit uh, in a, in a deployed fashion like that. The wings are conventionally broken down with a full span lower half and uh, two separate upper halves. The wings are specific to the Messerschmitt BF109E1 
That is to say, it has the machine gun covers on the top and it doesn't have the bulges on the bottom. So there are no inserts that you'll have to worry about uh, filling in on this kit. The kit also includes full engine detail. But Edward have taken a lot of notice of uh, the comments of modelers on the complexity of some of their kits, including their Focke-Wulf 190A and F series and their Messerschmitt BF-110s. And they've made sure that if you don't want the complexity of adding an engine, you don't need to actually build it. Uh, this is quite a thoughtful touch. If you don't want to include the engine, you just want to have the, the cowl sealed up, then they provide a strip on which you can mount the exhaust stubs, individual ex exhaust stubs, by the way, which are hollowed out at the end and feature nice raised weld seams. Uh, and you can just install those exhausts and close the cowl with uh, no further trouble required. The cockpit is well fitted out with both uh, plastic parts and also nickel and colour photo etch parts. The harnesses are particularly nice and I love the photo etch colour uh, instrument panel. It, it really does work very well in this model. We don't have a lot of options uh, apart from the, the positionable um, control surfaces, but the kit does include the blanked off spinner that we typically see on the E7s uh, and the TROP aircraft. It also includes alternate canopy armour and uh, finally it has a drop tank which isn't used on this variant but will be presumably on other variants. There's another uh, alternative for the supercharger intake as well, which is a little intriguing. I guess we'll find out more about that in due course. I've mentioned the colour and nickel photo etch parts already. Uh, once again, they include the instrument panels, the harnesses, some of the smaller details inside the cockpit, uh, and, the, um, uh, and the engine parts as well. Engineering of the kit is as clever as it always is with Edward, quite straightforward. I've already started building the kit. I've uh, put the engine together and the, uh, the cockpit and it all goes in quite well. I've run into a slight fit issue in that the uh, mount for the oil cooler intake uh, at the nose looks like it might be a tiny bit wide uh, for the fuselage, so I'm going to sand the sides of the uh, the assembly down before I actually install it. The decals are well up to the same high standards as the rest of this package. Two decal sheets are included. Both are printed by Cartograph. The, uh, the detail is, is gorgeous. The colours are worth mentioning, I think. Uh, the clear parts are as good as ever. They're thin and pretty much completely free from any kind of distortion. We only get the uh, E3 style of canopy with the low horizontal framing on the main part. But we do get the, uh, the armoured windscreen uh, that uh, was sometimes retrofitted to the E1s and the E3s. So if you were to ask me if we really needed another Messerschmitt BF-109 in 30-second scale, my answer would be an emphatic yes. Edward has delivered a kit which has a fantastic level of detail, uh, but still responds to customers' comments about complexity in allowing you to build the aircraft with an engine or without. It has gorgeous surface detail, beautiful decals, uh, a very useful uh, suite of multimedia parts including colour photo etch and canopy masks. Edward really has done it again. This is the definitive Messerschmitt BF-109E in 30 second scale and I can't wait to see the other variants. Thank you Edward and thanks out there in hyperscale land. Bye for now.